Hey guys, I am trying to clean my kitchen before it's time to go meet up with my D&D &D group. Friday is game night, um, but I was sort of spur of the moment trying to make a video and this is propped up um, sort of tenuously on a box so hopefully that won't fall and break but that's okay. Um, I posted a blog last night, late last night. Um, there's a hole in my bread bag. Oh, sadness. Um, damn it. Anyway, I posted a blog last night, um, and I sort of wanted to make a video and talk about it because it got more of a response than I was anticipating, and it seemed like something... It had it'd been something that was on my mind, and I guess it, it's been on a lot of people's minds, so I thought, let's put it in a medium that doesn't involve lots of reading on Pathios. Um, so... The, the blog is called um, Screw Your Aesthetic, and it's, it's kind of a, a Tumblr joke, right? But uh, what I was trying to get at is there's this thing that happens in witch communities, especially online witch communities, where um, in the attempt to kind of figure out what authentic witchcraft is or what real witchcraft or legitimate witchcraft right this this is a subject of like half of my videos is this obsession with authenticity and what that means in the quest to be real like to find a real witchcraft um we we get caught up in stuff right and i've made other videos about materialism and materiality um, but this particular conversation stemmed from one that I had with my working partner and my own coven um, about what does it mean to be witchy, right? When you feel witchy or when your house looks witchy or when your outfit is witchy, like what does that mean? Um, and the thing that I've noticed lately, um, and this this isn't new, right? It's, it's never new, right? Nothing new under the sun, but it's become prominent again um, is this idea that real witchcraft is, it's gritty and it's spooky and it's dark and it's bloody and there's pee involved and there's bones and there's, you know, there's midnight frolicking. I don't know, like, that kind of scary, subversive, right? Like, witchcraft maybe by itself is subversive. Like, I would say it's subversive, okay? But this idea that it has to be subversive to a particular extent, right? Like you have to be dark enough. You have to be um, transgressive enough. And if you don't reach those points, then you are, you're a dilettante, right? Like you're a, you're a pretender, a poser or something. Um, and the way that this manifests is in what you, what you possess, right? So, like there's a trend right now towards towards bones and skulls and um, what else, right? Like using blood in ritual or using urine, like bodily fluids and, um, you know, cursing. And there are certain things. It's not just about what you own. It's also about what you do with what you own. And there's this idea that like, oh, well, real witches aren't afraid of, of cursing. Real witches aren't afraid of using blood. Real witches aren't afraid of, you know, fill in the blank spooky thing. Um, and if you don't do those things... You must not be doing real witchcraft. Or if you don't do those things enough, it must not be real witchcraft. So, like, your status as a witch is tied up in, in what you own and what you do with it. So as an example, right, like, witches, real witches, work with the dead, right? Whatever that might mean, depending on who you're talking to, because sometimes it means very different things. Um, so in order to symbolize your work with the dead, you would have a skull on the altar. And it's, it's one thing to have a skull. That's great. But if you really want to be witchy, you have a human skull, right? Or you have the skull of a major predator, right? Like a wolf or a bear or something that's expensive and hard to acquire. Um, and those are how you, that's how you know who the serious witches are, right? If you don't use a skull at all, or if you've got like a rabbit you found outside, well, like that's nice. Maybe in a few years you'll be a real witch, Okay. So witchcraft comes to be inadvertently tied to money. It's commodified. It's about um, spending and building a particular sort of aesthetic about yourself, which may or may not have, which may or may not have anything to do with practice, right? Um, it's, it's interesting. 
and I don't know if it's because we're human beings and like I'm actually turning into Anthony Hopkins in the edge as I say this, but human beings covet, right? Like that's our, that's our big thing. That's the thing that gets us in trouble is we covet and we see things, beautiful things, right? Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, and we want them and we work to acquire them often without really thinking about the consequences or what's going to be required to acquire the thing. Um, because having the thing will add to our own witch aesthetic, right? So like if you get on Etsy, for example, um, right, like flying ointments are a thing right now. Like flying ointments have always been a thing, but now they're a commercial thing. Like there are a, a dozen places on the internet where you can buy flying ointments, okay? And the more animal parts they have in them, right, the more expensive they are, the more herbs that are, you know, imported from Europe or, you, you know what I mean, like... There's a monetary value attached to how witchy you could possibly be. And maybe you can only afford one thing versus the other. So you can go online and you could buy European mandrake, right? Because that's the one that's an authentic flying ointment. Except European mandrake half the time is impossible to find on the internet unless you want to pay ridiculous amounts of money to get scraps of it. Particularly if you're in the United States, okay? But... You can't use anything else because everything else isn't real mandrake. It's not going to, you know, and obviously, obviously plants have different properties depending on what they are. But like nobody stops to ask why as an American witch, for example, do I, do I necessarily need a European plant that just given the nature of human skin probably can't absorb into my flesh the way I want it to anyway to achieve that physical result? Like, we don't ask that stuff. Um, just the possession of it makes us feel like we're authentic. Um, it's a really... I guess it's not strange, right? We do this about about anything. It's like the witch version of keeping up with the Joneses. Um, and the end result is that if you don't measure up, like, you are a fraud or you're a poser or a dilettante or something. And... Um, I don't know, like, I'm not particularly scary, right? Like, I I work at an elementary school, and I've got a fox on my shirt, right? And I don't, like, I'm just, I'm not very scary looking, okay? And, you know, maybe I don't meet the, the standard of what one should look like if you're going to be a real witch, right? Um, there's things about how I look and how I carry myself and what I own that maybe, um, you know, it's, it doesn't meet, it doesn't meet the criteria for, for what a witch should look like or what a witch should do or be. Um, and there've definitely been instances where I've been told that I'm not practicing real witchcraft because I'm, I'm too tame basically, right? Like I don't, I don't use the, the right set of tools or I don't use enough blood or I don't use whatever. I don't, you know, um, like, it's just really dumb. Like, it's really dumb, okay? Because the whole thing stems on, the whole thing is predicated on this idea that real witchcraft is even a thing, like, to begin with, okay? Instead of something that we're consciously trying to construct, okay? Like, um, you can look at witchcraft, I've said this a million times in, like, every video, you can look at witchcraft, whatever that is, right? However, that gets translated depending on where you are in the world and whether or not it's translated even matters. You can look at it anywhere in the world at any given point, and it's different, okay? Like, there's not one objective real thing called witchcraft that you can buy your way into, right? Like, if you just have enough skulls or enough black clothes, or if you use enough of your blood, right? Like, that's not a thing. So... Like, I don't know. I think people should should do what they want to do and be reasonable reasonable about it. Okay, I don't object to I don't object to money. I don't object to consumerism inherently, right? Um, but I I think that we need to be asking ourselves questions about whether or not we should or like why why we're doing things. Like, why do you need to pay seventy bucks for the piece of European mandrake root, right? Like, yeah, I mean. You know, why do you need, 
I'm like, why do you need the human skull from India? Right? Like, why do you, why, why, why do you have to post the vials of your own blood on Tumblr, like invoking a, a, a witch demon to prove that you're better than Wiccans, right? Like, like, why does that have to be a thing? Um, so I just, it makes me uncomfortable when so much of what constitutes being witchy is just about posturing at other kinds of witches, right? So anyway, I wrote that blog, and you should go read it, because that would make me happy. And hopefully it will be interesting or meaningful, or at least amusing to you. Um, that would be awesome. I'll post a link below. I hope you guys are well. I'm going to go and actually clean my kitchen so I can be at D&D &D on time. Sorry for the rambling video, um, and I hope you guys are well.